Hi, welcome back to my channel, Display of Color. I'm Scarlett, and I'm going to be trying to do an inspired piece by Linda Melvin, doing some abstract fluid art with watercolor. Uh, in her video, which I'll have linked down below, she uh, uses 300 pound watercolor paper, and I'm using Blick um, Cold Press. It's the first time I'm using this from a block uh, paper, and it's only like 140 pound. So that is the first biggest uh, key that I would suggest um, anyone who wants to try this to do uh, because it, this process uses a ton and ton of water and so there's a lot of buckling regardless of us taping it down. Um, and so I'm arting with the Fairy Art Mother Studio t right here today on this video and I'm just squirting down uh, the water because I know it can't take as much but I do still need some kind of a lot of water on it though um, so I thought us having our own sprayers would be best I am also using hydrous uh, watercolor ink so I thought that'd be fun along with some of the MTN's liquid silver paint um, and if you watch throughout the video you will see a really kind of crazy moment happening and um, and I could do a little insert at the end to show you <laughs> what happens but I normally put that in a metal cup uh, plastic that liquid metal in a plastic cup and the one that I used here which is why I thought oh no worries um, but it ate through the bottom so you'll see that happen um, so it must have been a different kind of plastic that reacted with the chemical and it totally 100% just dissolved the completely the underneath bottom of it. It's, it's crazy. So basically after uh, wetting down my paper I'm just gonna um, put the ink where I would like it, the watercolor, throughout um, and just kind of blow it with my breath on um, the movement I'm looking for. Again I'm fighting the buckling which is causing my water to pool into certain spots um, you will see me like lift up the tape um, to try to get it to so in that sense um, this piece could have looked so much more beautiful um, but I had a lot of fun and I'm sure I'm not the only one that when you get really excited and inspired and you want to try something that you see you just want to try it regardless if you have all the means to be able to do it or not and you know, for example, that watercolor paper. So I am going to invest in buying the 300 pound. Um, it is hard to find 300 pound. I like to art on that because then I don't have to ever take my paper down. Um, but it is a lot more expensive, of course, but it's also harder to get, um, harder to access easily. So um, I'm gonna have to order along online. <laughs> Uh, and do this again because I definitely want I had a lot of fun doing this and I really want to try doing this again um, but uh, utilizing more of um, Linda Melvin's uh, process and again I'll have that um, inspiration video linked below so uh, you can check it out but she you know she wets with you'll see a picture <laughs> of water <laughs> pours it on the front as well as uh, flips the paper over what's that and then flips it back and and keeps wetting throughout her arting. so it was a lot a ton a ton of water that she used and 300 pound it's like mm, 640 gsm uh so it, it can it's pretty much like super gnarly thick cardboard if you think about it that way it, it won't buckle it doesn't bend and you can use a ton of water So I'm just mopping up different parts. Um, I really liked the Hydrus inks. This was my first time being able to use them. And um, they're really vibrant and, and quite beautiful. Uh, you really don't need much pigment. I found doing this pro I was like, whoa. I mean, it really is highly pigmented. They're really fun. They flow really beautifully too. So basically you're 
laying down pigment where you want it. You want to put your pigment um, with the kind of flow of where your eye is going to grab. And again, I was fighting the buckling and warping of my paper. So even with it taped um, down, it as you see, it's just it just keeps pulling. So it was um, disappointing in that sense. But uh, because where I wanted my flow to be or where I wanted the eye drawn uh, was getting just pulled <laughs> into the center in a big mush pot. So and I needed water in other places and it was just it wouldn't stay dry enough because it was just pedaling towards the, towards the center. So here's where I'm trying to lift thinking I maybe I can hold it up, stretch it to try to get it. But I just kind of gave up and, you know, I kind of fought with it. And then I kind of was like, meh, it is what it is. <laughs> and try to work around as best I could. <laughs> so uh, just adding two different, there's two different uh, kinds of pinks that I used on this. And, um, and I did use that Prussian blue. It was gorgeous in here. And the, their Prussian blue is really pretty. And a couple teals and turquoise. So I had a lot of fun. And this it was just really fun. It was a really fun day. I remember the sun had come out that day. So it was nice and warm. And, and um, it felt good. It felt like, ooh, it felt like... Uh, like summer's coming type of weather. It was really nice. It was a random day of some warmth and it's awesome. And uh, we got a lot of different things done that day and this was one of them. So I highly suggest just doing this. It's really fun to play with color. Um, you know, and, and I had never really thought of doing it this way. Uh, I, I used alcohol inks and done this a thousand times with alcohol, but I never for some reason thought of doing watercolor like this. And it's beautiful and it's it's gorgeous and it's it's super serene <laughs> if you're not fighting with the water buckling on your paper. <laughs> but um, I, I really did have a lot of fun. Oh, excuse me, that's my doorbell. So I'm just going to continue mopping up the excess water because I'm thinking like this is just not going to look good if it just puddles, which it was hard for me because on one hand I wanted the depth, the darkness of it. And I knew if I mopped it up, that ink would be gone. Um, but at the same time, it was it was too much. <laughs> You know, I could have added maybe a little more ink once I picked up a lot of the water, but I didn't want to risk it not uh, pushing around as much because I still needed, you kind of still needed it to pull a little bit to be able to really have that movement flow that I wanted. So this is that uh, liquid MTN silver. It's that metallic. Oh, it's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, and it's a paint. It's a it's a spray can. Uh, what's normally in, inside the spray can of paint, except for this doesn't have a spray sprayer nozzle. So it's just the raw liquid on the inside paint. And so I'm just using like a, what is this called? Uh, a pipette, a tiny little pipette to just, squirt it on there and then I put the cup down mind you you saw me pick it up so <laughs> I think it's like a probably the 11 minute mark you'll see it just eats a hole through the entire bottom <laughs> but so then I'm adding I wanted more pink over this way and it kept flowing towards the center so I hadn't put it in there yet and it still kind of is but it's not as bad, so. Um, and the cool thing about with, because it's an oil-based alcohol product, the, the paint, there's like, when you put the water in, there's this like weird little film that it does, and you'll see me 
uh, break it up right there, pick it up where I don't want it. And I could just, it's like a, it's almost like a skin. It's kind of neat. So I could just remove it entirely. Or I can just break it up and, which I do on this one right here, and make, break it up into little pieces and place it exactly where I want it. And I'm just using a pipette, I believe. Um, or it could be a, a wooden stick in my hand, I can't recall. It's probably the wooden skewer, skewer. And so I'm just breaking it up and placing it exactly where I want it to be. Um, so that way when the water and, you know, the dries, then it'll just be right on top and lay there perfectly adhered. So as you see, there's still a lot of water. I didn't want to get all the color, like I said, because when I picked it up, you know, it totally changed and made a really thin, greeny look to it and got rid of the blue and that little bit of purple mixed with it. So I was like bummed out. Um, so I was trying to like let it sit there as long as possible and dry naturally. And then I thought, let me try to get the heat gun out. I didn't want the water to move or splash. That was my biggest thing. I was like, I, I just wanted it to dry. But at the same time, like, I didn't want the paper to dry so much it would burn it, which you have to be really careful. Um, and I knew if it was on cool, it would take forever. <laughs> so I just kind of slowly, you know, try to heat it, have it on really low heat. But I de definitely wanted some heat. Uh, this heat gun you can have it all the way from cool to like super super hot so um i was able to make it moderately warm and then i'm just kind of sopping up the excess water and then trying to pull like push it down with the paper towel i know it looks like a tissue box but they're actually cloth paper towels in a tissue box kind of form. So that's what I'm pulling up when you see me or dabbing. It's actually a, like a cloth paper towel. So I'm just trying to gingerly like just get the water without it being so much intense. But again, as I do that, I just kind of my heart breaks a little because the depth of the richness that I wanted um, went away. And now that I have the silver on there, and since I did add on that pink, more of the pink, the fuchsia color, uh, when I put it on, it didn't kind of mess with it. So I didn't want to risk that on the dark because I thought, oh, I'll just add dark. But since I did the silver, it just kind of, I didn't really like how it looked. Um, what it did with it. So I was like, meh. So I couldn't add the darker. If I had waited or had mopped it up before and then thought of that, then I would have before I put the liquid and silver on there, empty and paint. The whole time I kept doing this too, I kept thinking, oh, I wonder how this would have turned out or how it would have been. Um, like, well, not the whole time, just <laughs> intermittently I would think of, like, I wonder what this would, how, how the, cool this would have looked if it was the 300 pound, you know, because then nothing would have warped or whatever. So I think it would have looked awesome. I personally really love how it turned out. I really, really had a lot of fun doing it and I really, really liked it how my piece turned out and so I think wow even with the correct paper it would have been even more awesome <laughs> so it's just me mopping up what I can because we do have to move and record another piece I do several pieces when I'm at the studio um, during that time that I'm there, so I can't really just let it sit and dry. <laughs> so I gotta kind of mop it up so that way I can pick it up and move it and 
get on with the next art project that we're doing. Um, and then I'll show you a close up of this with the still photo. At the very end, um, I'll show you the clip of the cup, what happened to the silver, but I just put, um, I noticed the the liquid of the silver, I thought that's weird. I thought maybe I spilt it and didn't remember and I just quickly was putting the towels to get it. <laughs> so, but it actually had that hole. So thank you for watching and enjoying. And again, at the very end of this, and the photo will be the little snippet of the bottom of that cup, which is kind of crazy. So be very careful which plastic cup you use for that. Um, I purposely didn't use a paper because I knew that would leak and burn through. So be really careful what paper, what cup you use. And that is the lovely Miss Judy's piece that I just showed, um, her abstract. It might say cherry blossom branch. It's really pretty. And here's that cup. Look at that. The whole thing is like gone. It's crazy. <laughs> Happy outing, everyone. God bless. Please thumbs up. Hit that uh, bell for all the notifications to be alerted and share. And have a great one.